Hello and welcome to this week's news at Gaming Bolt. Today we're going to start off by talking about Bethesda's Starfield. Now, we're all excited about Starfield. Incredibly, ridiculously excited. The concept of an epic open world, open universe, sci-fi RPG made in the iconic Bethesda style is a salivating one. So of course, we've all been hyped for the game even years before it was officially confirmed. That said, we're now hearing some pretty over-the-top statements about what the game may end up accomplishing. YouTube channel Camelworks uploaded a video on Starfield some time back in which the game was discussed quite a bit. Interestingly, they also claimed in their video that a Bethesda employee told them that the game is going to be the biggest leap in gaming ever. Here's the employee's exact quote as per the video. Oh man, I wish I could tell you more, but Starfield is the biggest leap in gaming ever. Now, aside from the emphasis being my own, that's a bold claim, to say the very least. To be the biggest leap in gaming ever, it would literally have to change the very fabric of this particular style of games. Is it possible? Why, yes, it is possible. But in today's day and age, where the industry is basically built upon improvements and iterations, it is also very, very improbable. It's also worth noting that the Bethesda employee who said this wasn't named in the video. We should of course be careful about not overhyping a game, any game, way too much. You need look no further than something like No Man's Sky to see what kind of impact something like that can have even on a good game. But who knows, maybe Bethesda actually have something truly revelatory planned for the game. Perhaps that's why they're planning on making Starfield a next-gen game. But if it does end up launching on current-gen systems as well, which is something they haven't ruled out yet, that would present some complications. Either way, we probably won't be learning much about it anytime soon. Even though the game has been in development for some time now, we're going to have to be patient about getting any concrete info on it. Now moving on to a game which many believe can change gaming as we know it, Cyberpunk 2077. Now, it may be set in a futuristic sci-fi setting with cybernetic augmentations, crazy weapons, and all the stuff that comes with such a setting, but CD Projekt Red is still making their game and their setting as authentic as they possibly can. Recently, in an interview with IGN, Mike Pondsmith, who is the creator of the Cyberpunk 2020 pen and paper RPG which the upcoming game is based on, said that a lot of thought actually went into creating the technology and lore behind the original tabletop game, and that it only included stuff that could tangibly be part of reality. He went on to give the example of cyberware brain implantations and said that a neurosurgeon was actually consulted for the same. What I love about PNP is the reality of it, Pondsmith said. The fact that we didn't just pull the ideas, the concepts, and the technology out of nowhere. We built them on things that we could actually tangibly back in reality. For example, we did cyberware. We sat down with a guy who's a neurosurgeon and we said, how do we make this stuff work? How do we implant it? What's the surgical procedure? What can we get away with? That sounds pretty good, honestly, a setting that is fantastical in nature, but backs its over-the-top elements by actually being rooted in reality to some extent. It always proves to be more immersive as a result, and immersion seems to be a huge factor in Cyberpunk 2077. The game is currently without a release date, and it's likely that that will remain so for the foreseeable future. After all, it's still only in the pre-alpha development stage. Speaking about Microsoft's next Xbox console, now first things first, there will be a traditional next generation Xbox console. The specs on this device are unclear right now given that it's still early in development. However, some word has already leaked on Xbox Scarlet, the code name for what would be the next Xbox. The specifics have remained unclear until now. However, Brad Sams of Thurot, the man who leaked Scarlet to begin with, has more details on what we can expect from Microsoft's next generation efforts. Now it's important to remember that Phil Spencer announced at E3 that the same team that designed the Xbox One X will be designing the successor, so we can expect similar sensibilities to transfer over. It's the second console in this family of devices which is far more interesting. See, it's a lower priced option and entirely reliant on the cloud streaming game service Microsoft announced at E3, which apparently also has the internal code name Scarlet. The reason this box exists at all for a cloud solution is to counter the problems with latency, which have traditionally been the biggest roadblock with cloud gaming. Apparently, the cloud console will exist to handle some processing locally, with some speculative processing done to handle controller input, image processing, and collision detection. All things that add the most to latency if processed remotely via the cloud. This means the box will have some local hardware, but it will be able to ship for a far cheaper price than the traditional Xbox console presumably will sell for. This is in many ways very similar to what Microsoft tried with the Xbox One to begin with back in 2013, but there are two crucial differences. 
First, the technology now is better than it was back then to handle something like this, though we're still not a point where a digital-only console is feasible. Secondly, this time, for those players who don't want a cloud-only solution, Microsoft is providing the option to have a traditional gaming console instead. They're offering a choice which is something they never offered with the original Xbox One at first, which is one reason among many why there was such severe backlash against it, Microsoft taking away user choice. Now we just have to wait and see how the market responds to them this time. Talking more about No Man's Sky, it recently received its massive next update, as drawn players back to the game in droves. Despite a few issues which a recent patch helped iron out, the multiplayer and expanded base building is definitely being appreciated. Speaking of base building, though we've seen miniature cities and other expansive facilities, have you ever wondered just how high you could build? Director and Hello Games founder Sean Murray decided to showcase just how high you could go in a new video. It starts with the player at the very height of a building and falling down to the planet's surface. The fall starts 14 seconds into the video and concludes at 48 seconds. For a 50 second video overall, that's quite a long fall. Among other things players can do in the next update is manage a fleet of freighters that can be called in for backup or send on missions in real time, explore a wider range of sites including derelict stations, and even fight other players. More content will be coming courtesy of weekly updates which bring missions and community events that promise rewards, so stay tuned. Quite recently, we learned that the selection for players for the Fallout 76 beta will begin in October, which means that the beta itself is likely to begin towards the end of October as well, since the game itself launches in November. However, if you think that might not be enough time for Bethesda to be able to properly test out everything they need for such a massive large-scale game, fret not, a smaller beta for the game might be held even before the actual beta itself. Bethesda's VP of Marketing, Pete Hines, recently took to Twitter and confirmed that a smaller test for the game will likely be going online five days or three weeks before the full beta goes live, whatever the team at Bethesda Game Studios feels it needs to get enough feedback for the full beta itself. Hines also clarified that the players participating in this mini beta will be chosen randomly from the pool of players that will be chosen for the full beta itself, if that makes any sense. The involved players won't have to do anything. Considering that this is the first game of its kind that Bethesda Game Studios are attempting, online-centric shared world approach, it makes sense that they'll want to get as much testing done as possible. They've admitted to being worried about charting into unknown territory in recent weeks, so it's not much of a surprise that they're holding a beta even before the real beta goes live. Fallout 76 launches on November 14th for the PS4, Xbox One, and PC. That'll be it for this video. If you like what we're doing, please go ahead and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.